Hey everyone, I finally finished uh, my aerogel project and was able to make a few small pieces of aerogel in my home shop. So let me show you the pieces and then show you how I did it. So check it out, these actually came out fairly clear. Now the pieces are um, pretty well cracked. I mean these, these chunks are not exactly uh, high quality monoliths, but I'm working on getting the quality better. I was pretty happy just to get these done. And it feels kind of like like chalk or charcoal, but of course it weighs almost nothing. You can hardly tell it's even, you know, I can hardly feel it in my hand. It's just so light. Um, I weighed these pieces and they're coming in at about a gram and a half for something this size, which is actually fairly dense as far as aerogels go. Um, but obviously I'm working on, on get, getting the quality better. I have a feeling I can get the density down once I get a little bit more control of the process. So uh, let me tell you how I did it. Probably the most difficult aspect of this whole project was getting a hold of this chemical. This is tetramethyl orthosilicate, uh, which is also known as uh, tetramethoxysilane. It's the same stuff, it's just the two names are, are for the same chemical. And um, getting this is difficult because most chemical supply houses will not ship to individuals. They definitely will not ship to residences. So you have to get this through tricky means. Um, I got my recipe for this uh, aerogel off aerogel.org and using tetramethyl is one method and using uh, tetraethyl is another. But getting either of these chemicals is quite difficult. So if you're really interested in aerogel production and you happen to live close to me, uh, maybe come by my shop and um, I might be able to share some of this since I have quite a bit. This is 250 milliliters of chemical which is enough to make uh, probably 20 batches of aerogel of the, of the quantity that I just showed you. So I followed the directions off of uh, aerogel.org pretty closely. Uh, the first step is just to measure out uh, a little ammonium hydroxide. Concentrated ammonium hydroxide is about 29 to 30 percent and I got this as you can see at LabPro. LabPro actually will sell chemicals to individuals. These guys are based in uh, San Sunnyvale or Santa Clara uh, right around here. But they wouldn't order tetramethyl orthosilicate for me because they didn't even have a source for it. Um, I got this chemical from Sigma Aldrich, and uh, Sigma Aldrich won't even ship chemicals to LabPro because uh, they're worried that LabPro will resell them to individuals. It's really quite ridiculous, but anyway, uh, you can get some stuff from LabPro that isn't too exotic. So I made up a stock solution of this ammonium hydroxide, and I didn't have a volumetric flask, so I actually measured the water out by mass. Uh, and then used a pipette to measure the uh, ammonium hydroxide. Okay, so after I had the stock solution of ammonium hydroxide, um, I mixed up the uh, solution A on the uh, instructions here, which is a combination of the tetramethyl orthosilicate and methanol, and then solution B, which is a, a combination of this ammonium hydroxide stock solution and methanol. Then you mix solution A and solution B together and pour this mixture into a mold. So the mold, originally I used these uh, acrylic molds and I lined them with uh, baking paper. It's like a silicone coated paper for, for baking cakes and whatever. And that worked out okay, but I actually found a much better solution. Uh, later on I used these syringes and just cut the ends off of them so that the plunger can come all the way out like this. And then what I would do is pull the plunger back and put it on the counter vertically and pour the uh, gel mixture into the syringe. And then after the gel set, I could just push the syringe forward and push the, the formed gel out. The instructions say that the gel time is like 8 to 15 minutes, which I found to be pretty optimistic. Uh, probably better to leave it for an hour to make sure that the gel has really set. And so what this gel is, is, is mostly methanol uh, with a small amount of water and silica. It's quite fragile. In fact, it's quite uh, breakable. I mean, it seems like a gel would be sort of rubbery, but it's, it's not like that at all. It's actually quite uh, rigid and easy to crack. I bought some uh, technical grade methanol also from LabPro uh, but started to run low on it and since you need you end up needing quite a bit of methanol for, to make aerogel since you're constantly um, 
changing the solvent. So a cheaper source of methanol is this heat uh, gas line antifreeze. This is more or less pure methanol. I think there's a couple ingredients that they aren't telling us about. If you read the back it says there's some other kind of additive, but it's very almost pure methanol. And so I use this for a lot of the solvent exchanges. So the idea is that uh, after you make this gel you want to remove that remaining amount of water uh, because the water will uh, be a problem in the drying process. So your gel is mostly methanol with a small amount of water and the way to get the water out is to keep changing uh, the methanol that the or changing the solution that it's soaking in. So when you first create the gel maybe it's you know two percent water so you soak it in methanol and the water will slowly diffuse out into the methanol then you dump that methanol out replace it with fresh hundred percent methanol and get a little bit more water out of the gel. So this is a diffusion limited process and uh, you, you, it takes days so change the solvent, wait a day, change the solvent, wait a day. Eventually you'll coax all that water out of the gel and you'll be left with a 100% methanol solvent. Uh, at that point you can load the gels into the supercritical drying chamber which I showed in a previous video. And so the whole point of supercritical drying uh, is that we can use the property of, of a supercritical fluid to dry the gel without disturbing its structure. So what would happen if we just left the gel out on the counter for a while to dry it out? Uh, we would end up with something called a zero gel and as the methanol evaporates from the gel the surface tension of the methanol will actually pull the gel's structure tighter and tighter together. So instead of a nice lightweight expanded aerogel you end up with a fairly dense piece of material because as that solvent keeps evaporating the surface tension keeps pulling the structure tighter and tighter together. So we need to figure out a way to get the methanol out of the gel without ruining its structure. And that's where the supercritical drying comes in. So just like we used methanol to uh, extract the remaining water out of the gel, the first step in, in drying this thing is to put the the methanol soaked gel into the supercritical drying chamber and start exchanging that methanol with liquid CO2. So liquid CO2 can uh, dissolve quite a number of things including methanol. So what we do is we fill the chamber up with liquid CO2, wait a while, drain that liquid CO2 which is now mixed with methanol, uh, fill the chamber back up with liquid CO2, drain it again, fill it up again, and you can do this a number of times. It probably depends how big your gel is. Uh, a bigger gel would probably require more changes to make sure that all that methanol has been uh, dissolved and drained away. Uh, so at this point we have a gel that, that no longer has any methanol at all in it, it's just soaked with liquid CO2. Now what we can do is raise the temperature and uh, if the, since the chamber is sealed the pressure will also go up and all of that liquid CO2 will become supercritical. So a supercritical fluid is basically like a gas but it's very dense. It has properties of both uh, fluids and gases or properties of liquids and gases. So by keeping the uh, temperature and pressure high enough there will be no surface tension because supercritical fluids have gaseous properties and we can pull out that remaining CO2 in its gas phase or in its supercritical phase so that we don't disturb the structure of the gel. So by doing this slowly we can sort of drive around the liquid phase of CO2 and uh, dry the gel out relatively quickly. I, the, uh, the times listed on aerogel.org are actually pretty conservative. So far the biggest problem I've had is uh, having the gels crack when I add liquid CO2 to the chamber. And I think this is because uh, the liquid CO2 is boiling a bit and it doesn't really hit the wall of the chamber. It kind of rains down on the gels and as it's sitting there boiling it's, it's very cold and it, it cracks the gel due to thermal expansion or contraction. And so uh, fixing this may just be as simple as putting like a little tin foil or a little aluminum foil shield over the gel so that when I open the valve and add liquid CO2 to the chamber it doesn't rain down on the gels directly. So I'm going to try that next. Uh, on aerogel.org they suggested putting soaking the gels in methanol <clears throat> in the drying chamber and that way when you add liquid CO2 there's no way it can hit the, the gel so that might be a good alternative as well. Alright well I hope you found that interesting. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you want any help making your own aerogel.
See you next time. Bye.